Have you guys used the word normal before in physics? What is a normal? Where do you use the word normal in physics? Normal force. Normal force, right? And it's it's a force perpendicular to the like it's 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 perpendicular to whatever surface you're looking at, right? The normal line to a tangent line, the normal line to a curve. If you have a curve here, the tangent line is that. The normal line would be obviously perpendicular to that, right? That's that's the normal line. Okay, a normal line, a, a, a line that's normal to a curve is perpendicular to the tangent line. If you know that, there's not really much I have to show you here because while well, you need one grade 10 thing, you need to remember one grade 10 thing. So if I ask you write an equation for the normal line to this curve, probably you would you need to know first of all that slopes of perpendicular lines slopes of perpendicular lines how are they related yeah they are negative reciprocals okay so in other words Slopes of slopes of uh, perpendicular lines. Um, if a tangent has a slope of uh, two thirds, then what's its what's the normal line? What's the slope of the normal line? Negative three over two, negative three over two right? If this has a slope of four, this is negative one quarter. If this is a slope of negative point one. This is either 1 over 0.1 or 10, right? Negative reciprocals, right? That's not that hard to... We're not going to use normal lines that often, but you should know you should know that fact. And if you already know that, then, then you're good, okay? If you're asked to find the equation of, this, of a normal line, just the same as trying to find the equation of a tangent line, you need to know the slope first. So I would say find tangent slope, right? And then use that to figure out the normal slope. Okay, determine the normal slope. And then find the equation just using one of the points, right? Find equation Slope and one point, right? Point slope form. The one point should be probably the one that it goes through, right? That's the easiest one, unless you happen to know another point. Does that make sense? Makes some sense. Uh, we're gonna, you're gonna work on that in a second, but we're just gonna look at the last thing, and then you can work on both those things. Cause that's this uh, last page here. Okay, and then you can try to, you can try both those things together. At the beginning of this chapter, this section, this unit, we started by looking at this, the speed of something that's falling. Okay, a rock that's falling. Okay, this was the very first thing we looked at. If you have the, the thing, its position function. If you have a function for its position, its instantaneous velocity, just the slope of the curve, right? We had this graph that looked like this. There's its position at any time. Or there's the distance it's fallen. Okay? Its, its instantaneous velocity is the slope of that curve at any point. Okay? Slope of tangent, right? It's going to be its derivative. You're going to, we, I haven't given you a formal definition of derivative, but it's the slope of the tangent line. It's the rate of change of the function. The rate of change of this position function is velocity. So if you, if you have a function for position, it's instantaneous velocity is you can just write an expression for this, right? If you know that's the position of the thing, its velocity is, you can say, limit as, you know, h approaches zero, this whole thing. In practice, you're going to learn some quick rules for finding the derivative. In physics, if you're using a derivative, you're not, 
You're not going back to the definition of the derivative every time unless you have no other alternative because you'll have some quick rules that you're going to find or quick shortcuts. But if, if all else fails, you can you can do this, right? At any time t here, so we want f of t plus h minus f of t, right, over h. I didn't give you much much space here to work it out, but you could say limit as h. We'll fill it. We'll at least fill in the specific function here. 16 times t plus h squared, right, minus 16 times t squared over h. I'm going to put dot 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 because that is that is for you to to keep going with and figure out to the bottom here. Okay. Figure out an expression for the speed of this thing at any point. At the beginning of the unit, we had a specific value in here for t. And we just worked it out. Here, I want you to come up with an expression. Okay? And then you can substitute in that. So you know what you, know what you need to do? And then, uh, and then we're kind of done with this, with this unit. We should, uh, we should look at a calendar and pick a time for this. Can you try those two questions first, and then we'll do some planning before the end of the, the end of the period. But you're at the point now where you're at the point now where you should start, not right now, but in the next week or so, start worrying about getting that done.